We have the uh, Ubis 13 HF, which is high flow, in the store, it's for sale. For sale today. Okay. So today is the first day, so I thought we would feature... Special promotion right now. What is it? Uh, the first 50-ish get a tip pack that goes along with it. So what tips are included with that? So we, we throw in some free tips for these so early adopters. Let's talk about what's installed on it first. So what comes install on it is a .75 millimeter tip. Okay, it's big. Good. Yep, big. Because it's for high flow. Is that what we got going here? That's what's going on at stock. Okay. And then the tips that you get with the, the promotional batch, which again is going to be around 50, we'll take it off the website once the promotion ends. So you'll know if you're getting it or not based on the product description. Uh, 0.4 millimeter, so standard on what used to be the old Ubis Ceramic and Ubis 13S. So if you want to go back down to that finer tip, you can. Uh, 1.5 millimeter. So we're going to wow. go bigger and an experimental two millimeter yes. tip. I love that one because the filament's 1.75. I'll explain a little bit about how you would use a two millimeter tip with a 1.75 filament. But what we did here is I just wanted to show a simple visual demo. So over here, we actually have the same, well, it's, it's the same model, right? Stock. It was, it was no, stock. no, no, I'm, I'm talking about the model that it's printing. I had a slot. Well, it's the same STL. Okay. Same but model. But it's a different G code. Right. Yes. Because, and here's why, the the wider tip over here. This is 0.75, and this is 0.4. 0.4. So this is typical to what you would have installed on your printer, because yes. all of our printers, uh, up until the Pro, shipped with the 0.4, yep. and the Pro ships with the 0.3. The Pro is really for people that want very very high resolution out of the box. So. This is a 0.4, so even if you don't have a simple, this is the performance similar to what you would get with your printer if you have a 0.4 nozzle. And it shouldn't matter whether you have a ceramic on one of the old ones with no fan, this is a ceramic, or a Ubis 13S, which is our standard uh, nowadays. This is the Ubis 13 HF for high flow. So it's longer. And the fact that it's longer, I, what was it, a half inch, quarter inch? I forget how much longer, but we've doubled the melt zone. So when you double the melt zone, you can get more heat onto the plastic and you can move faster. I mean, move the plastic through faster, so that's why it's high flow. It's actually volumetric flow. In other words, we don't talk about speed in printing speed because you know if you sped this up to the fastest speed that it could possibly do with a 0.4, um, it doesn't have to move as much plastic as this. So this speed would be slower than this because we're moving more material and you know that's harder to do. It's the hot end that melts, melts the material. So if you have less to melt over here, it's gonna look faster. But I wanted to show this demonstration because this is actually the real world of, let's just compare, forget the tip size is different. It is uh, basically the same bot. It's a different slice because you got to slice it differently for the tip size. But in effect, the total time is much faster. I mean, look, this is on what layer three? Layer three, layer four, somewhere around there. It's about to hit layer four. It looks like to get to a base layer, total layer height of 1.2 millimeters. So the bottom of this cylinder uh, is actually 1.2 millimeters. This one did it in a couple of layers. Just two passes because we're doing it at 0.6. You can do 0.6 layer heights for this one. You got to do 0.3 layer heights for that one. Okay. Now 0.3 layer heights pretty thick for typical printers. Yep. So I don't know. You probably can't see this real well. Um, oh, it's already done. So what's the time? So Nine this minutes, 55 seconds. This was a roughly a 10 minute print. Yep. And this is just now. I see it. It's getting to. It must have been on the fourth layer, third or fourth layer. But now it's doing the spiral portion. It's not truly a spiral print. Because doesn't it, or is it? It's spiral based. Oh, it's spiral based. I slice it with slicer. So the difference between these two prints will be the wall thickness here. Mm -hmm. But I guess it's a little more fair to do a spiral print over yeah. here as well. Because then you don't have travel moves, you don't have multiple passes on the wall yeah. thickness. So if you wanted this to be exactly the same, you'd have to dump the spiral print on this and it would have to do a couple passes. Two, two perimeters two perimeters to have the same wall thickness. But Ish. the benefit, yeah, I mean, that we're, we're generalizing. Yeah. The benefit of going to a larger nozzle when you go to the HF is 
you both, you get structural strength. So um, this has got very good layer adhesion and I'm a little bit scared to pull that off. Spiral prints, typically they break unless you pry them up from the bottom. Do you have something that I could? Your left hand should have something. You want to try to get that off without breaking it? But anyway, so it's not totally apples to apples, but you kind of have to get your head around um, the different strengths and weaknesses of these two setups. So you can see here, Dave, I don't know if you can zoom in on this. It's kind of like back to the old days where you can see the layer height because it's 0 0.6. 0 0.6. 0 0.6, but it has a certain appeal to it, and it's definitely strong. Uh, you've got one pass kind of melting together with the bottom, you know, all at once instead of two small passes. Uh, but anyway, I think this is a, a pretty good example of what you're going to save in print time. And that is really the painful part of 3D printing that a lot of people don't talk about anymore. It used to be, I'd show a 3D printer to somebody and their first question was, is it always that slow? And the answer is, yeah, I mean, it's all slow. 3D printing is slow um, when compared to injection molding or something like that. You know, CNC is even slower because you have to remove so much material and leave just a little bit of material. So this part on a CNC would be much slower. But anyway, uh, but now we're starting to make some progress in printing faster. One is you give up resolution for thicker layers, bigger tips, thicker walls. And on that two millimeter, I have a guy with the prosthetic printer, he's using a two millimeter tip. He's over extruding like 2.5 on the extrusion multiplier so that even more is coming out because he's only doing one pass and he wants a three millimeter thickness. So he's getting around three millimeters thickness with a, a two millimeter tip. But what's kind of cool about that is for his uh, target, you know, what he's using his printer for, it's kind of a one trick pony. It's a lot of spiral vase stuff, or at least a lot of hollow prints with thick walls. He's using PETG. He's getting great speed. Total print time is low for uh, this type of setup with a two millimeter nozzle, HF, uh, the HF with the two millimeter nozzle. And if you were to try to do that on a regular printer, like an Ultimaker or something, it would take forever. Now, Ultimaker, you can go fast, but it's a very small tip. So again, that tip tends to be the speed. The Ultimaker doesn't even print large enough for him. So larger printers, faster printing, uh, thicker you know, extrusion that comes out and faster extrusion. It's kind of opening up some doors for 3D printing to, to come into new niches that need specific